Hi, my name is Joshua, and for the last six months, I've been living in this tiny home space on a farm on Demon Island. This building was built with all the timber coming off of the land, and the walls are actually a cob, uh, a cob fill. So it's it's post and beam filled in with cob in for the walls, and that again also came off of the property. And you'll notice the roof is a, a green roof, a live roof. It rains on that, and uh, we collect rainwater in the back. Have a look inside. First thing you'll notice, we got wood for the for three quarters of the of the flooring, but the first half here is all um, uh, rock and mortar. And actually, that the foundation that's what the foundation is runs all the way along. This little wood stove runs really great; heats the whole place up really quickly. And if I let it go out, it'll still retain heat in this building for 24 sometimes 48 hours depending on what the temperature is outside and that's again because of this thermal mass the all of the walls here are about eight inches of earth so it it breathes it's totally breathable moisture can move in and out just fine this will retain heat for a long time and then moving on we've got a nice little uh, kitchen here again this is uh, one of the main things to have to figure out how to live with is a very small uh, fridge but it works. It's a regular propane. Nice big sinks. Doesn't matter how small your space is, a nice big sink or double sink goes a long way. And generally, with this much space, that's more than enough for, for all our food. We have, uh, you know, um, a farmer's market every week so you can stock, restock. And we live on a farm, so there's lots of things that we just, yeah, can get off the property. Over here, nice little table. Um, so I had it like this for quite a while. And that was uh, just, I would sit here and I had my guitar here, I could play my guitar, I could have my laptop out or whatever, play board games, so there's enough room. But right now it's only going to be one person hanging out in here, so I've got it like this. All of these windows open and uh, these shutters can open so you get tons of light. Um, they're just closed for, for warmth right now. Uh, I have power coming from the main house. I have water collecting from water collecting from the roof so it's rainwater so you can brush your teeth with it you can boil water and you can drink it but basically I collect water from from another source and that's my drinking water and then this is what I clean with so you'll notice there's no bathroom in here or shower um, so that happens in the main house so this is not a self-sufficient or self-contained space and then of course the bed come and look at this thing it's humongous tiny house huge bed Again, all earth walls, post and beam construction. This space could be modified quite a bit for personal needs, but because this is usually temporary space for people who are only living here while they're doing an apprenticeship, it's kind of just bare bones and basic. And I also moved out right now, so it's, it's looking pretty thin, uh, pretty empty, but there's a lot of room to put a lot of stuff in. There's lots of storage in there. There's all these storage spaces right here. Um, this is neat, this is actually worth it. So when the family first built this, they built this and lived in it while they were building their house. And these were actual uh, a ladder for their uh, son who was uh, sleeping up there when he was about two or three years old. So that's kind of neat. I get internet from uh, an ethernet cable that comes from the house. So it's kind of neat, it's rustic, but I have, I have internet, I have power. I have heat and it's been a very, very super comfortable winter for me in here. Well, I live in a tiny house because this is this, the accommodation they have for people doing work on the farm, but I've loved living in tiny home spaces for my whole life. Uh, some of the benefits of living in a tiny space is, you know, if you're eating food here in your kitchen, then you can put your dishes in the sink without even uh, getting up. Um, I, I don't like the idea of walking around large distances, so a small space means less movement, there's more efficiency for everything, it's quicker to heat up with a wood stove. Um, if you make a mess, it really shows really quickly, but then it becomes super easy to clean up. You, like No matter how messy this space is, it's tiny and you can clean it all up in really short time. Some of the challenges are definitely when it comes to a social situation, uh, if you want to have friends over. 
You have to be a little inventive of how to, to get everyone in. Garbage and recycling are definitely challenges. Uh, having a limited amount of space for clothes, you can't be interested in music and art and pottery and you know you have to pick one or two things you want to be good at or or uh, like hobbies you want to do because you just don't have room for stuff. With lumber harvested off of the property and the walls are made out of cob so uh, it's an earth building so it was labor intensive but basically very cheap in resources. Um, because this is a permanent building it's it's a little different. I, I think that the costs are quite unique for something like this. But I just bought a van for a hundred bucks with the plan on converting it and that's going to be the least part, like the least expensive part of the whole reno. Right, this is uh, this is my latest uh, investment. I bought this van for a hundred bucks because it was a hundred bucks and because I know the engine of this thing pretty well. And this is the kind of thing that someone would probably write off and throw away because of like this kind of rot here and stuff. But for me, I'm just like replacing a window, fixing a door, bumping some stuff out. Totally, totally worth it. So let's have a look. I put all my tools and stuff in in here. So it's just a temporary thing. Like I say, I'm, I just moved into that that trailer. So this is going to be my next my next project. I look at this thing and I'm going like, how am I gonna fill all this space? There's so much room in here. Being able to stand up is huge. And and there's, like I say, so much space. If it's like, I have to yell to talk to the driver. But all of this stuff is gonna come out. I'm not even scared of it. I'm gonna rip all of this out. Rip all of this out down to the metal. Down to the metal. Rip everything off the ground gut it and clean it. That's one of my specialties is being able to rip stuff out and I'm not afraid of it. And then after that it's going to be basically just I'm going to look on the internet and follow the guides that they have for uh, for van conversion. I'll live in this once it's set up and made really nice. Have uh, a full kitchen in here, um, solar panels on the roof and make it completely livable so that I can work on the next and final project um, and also probably use this in the win in the summer uh, for festivals. So would I recommend this to other people as a lifestyle? I mean for me personally I started by hitchhiking and being very anti-materialistic from the get-go. I loved having all, my whole life in a backpack and I could up and go and that sense of independence um, and the ability to adapt was was always an important aspect of, of my lifestyle for me. Getting into whether it's a van or you know with or a trailer something on wheels that you can move around um, it's it's definitely a, a clear delineation it's a choice and once you've let go of having that that property or that 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 solid thing that that can weigh you down um, and you're okay with the sacrifice of, of how much stuff you can have uh, there's it's a great lifestyle for people who are musicians or artists who are traveling um, if you're planning on homeschooling I could even imagine a couple with a kid there this building here actually housed uh, uh, a couple and a, and a child for like two or three years I, I recommend this lifestyle for everybody it's a low impact way to live on on the land and um, it's you can have quality instead of quantity instead of having a huge space with lots of art or lots of this or that you can have a small space with really nice quality furniture nice quality things and so that's that's one aspect that I really like about it I think you I think if someone was going to get into this lifestyle whether it was to buy something or to start from scratch I mean that's a that's a big first choice right there how much skill sets do you have how much uh, it's like a sailboat um, a sailboat you need to know how the mechanics work you need to know how to to fix every single piece of that of that boat uh, you know deal with it if you have leaks and and so being the master of your space uh, is as a it takes a lot of different skill sets unless you want to just buy that ready to go thing in which case you know if you have the money to invest in something like that and just to see on a whim if it's something you want then then great make sure whatever you're investing into is sound uh, before you, you start building into it. Um, but and always do as much research as you can. There's a lot of ways you can cut corners on costs, getting things secondhand, uh, going to Habitat for Humanity, 
or or um, you know construction sites getting off cuts and things like that there's a lot of ways you can bring the cost down there's there's so many good resources online that that I'd say just don't have the fear and just get get over the fear and get your hands into it before someone gets into a tiny home they should maybe try living in one first so I've had the opportunity to live in a, a bunch of different small home spaces cabins and trailers over the years and so I know that I like the lifestyle and I think that's a really important thing is to make sure that you can actually be in a small space first instead of looking at it like you're going to my lifestyle is going to be restricted by this small space I get to look at it like my clothes and my job and my dog and my food habits and um, the hobbies that I do that that all of that is encompassed in the tiny home space and so it's it's better to sculpt the space as you also sculpt your lifestyle and try and make them like really think about what you're actually going to be doing in your mornings after you know work what it's going to be like on a really big snow day and plan for for your lifestyle to be harmoniously in sync with whatever the space is that you're in so I'm 34 years old and I grew up on Demon Island since about the age of 10 and uh, I've been very much a wanderer, uh, hitchhiker, traveler, um, transient and usually I end up back on Demon in the winters after festival season bumming around either at my mom's or at different friends places and this is farm I've been coming back to on and off for over 12 years and uh, this time around I actually just meant to show up in September for like two weeks of work and it's turned into half a year I've, I've been here. And um, so this small space, I'm actually, I've just cleaned it up, I'm moving out, I'm moving into a trailer so that their uh, uh, nursery apprentice can take this space over and I'm really happy that it's, it's in a good condition to pass on. Um, but I'm looking at uh, renovating another small space and uh, live, having it for a set amount of years. So that's pretty exciting to me because I've never had the opportunity to build something uh, from scratch. And uh, I, I have skills that I've never put into something on my own. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to that. So this is, uh, this is the trailer. Um, so I have a habit of cleaning things up really good. I can tear, tear stuff out of a place and clean it up better than I can build. And I... I don't know if it's because of my generation or what, but I think that enough things have been built in the world and we just need to learn to maintain and appreciate what we have. So this trailer was given to me. It's a piece of shit, um, but I'm making the best out of it. Uh, so I literally just got it, uh, got into it today. I plan on like scrubbing the outside down and checking for leaks or anything like that. Well, come on in. So I literally haven't even slept in here yet, uh, but I spent uh, two days cleaning it all up and there's some pretty neat features. So we got propane. This is from the 70s and it still works super good. If you're ever renoing a, a van or something like that and your propane, if it burns with yellow, you just screw everything, take this off, screw that off, get the rust out and it'll burn blue again and that's, that's pretty pretty neat got a little propane heater right here super tiny pretty efficient but right now I'm gonna go with this instead this uh, has been heating up the space super duper efficiently and uh, plastic could go on the windows actually they will go on the windows to make it more efficient uh, I do have power that will work just a, a cord coming from the main house so I can have my lights here and here um, and then water will also be hooked up. I've checked all that out and it super works. And then yeah, bed, not much space for very much, but I don't plan on living in here for very long. Um, one thing that I like about a small space, even a space like this, is that everywhere I look, I have a good view of outside. So it's funny, people think that, you know, it's claustrophobic living in a small space, but I actually feel like really connected to the larger space outside because I'm always able to look out every direction. Um, it's pretty liberating. Uh, and I'd have to say, if someone takes on a project like one of these trailers, like my intention is to take some of, the, some of these things out and use them in my van conversion. And then, uh, and then I do plan on taking all of these things out. If you um, get a van like this, the main, or a trailer like this, the main thing to focus on is, um, 
looking for rat holes or mouse holes. So have a look in here. I don't know if you can see that corner, but um, there's a hole to the outside right there where mice can get in, you know, and, and like this, there's nothing to these trailers, um, which means they could actually be a pretty fun project to strip down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna strip everything out and maybe even just rebuild, rebuild the whole thing. Um, or just take it right off the trailer and use the trailer to rebuild. But uh, I would say that if you're interested in living in a tiny home and you have the security of living in a nice space and you like have a, uh, a driveway or something to work in, to get something like this and just start tearing it apart and looking at how it's built and then rebuilding it and making it your own. So you saw the, the first home that I was living in. It's a natural home, it's built permanently. And I moved into that trailer. It's, it's a rat trap, it's clean enough, it's good enough for now while I make that van uh, a, a home. Um, but even that is just temporary, and this is the dream. Um, so this, uh, this house was built uh, about five years ago and left incomplete. And the, the owners of the property are looking for someone to take it on and finish it in exchange for having it for a set amount of time. And we're still negotiating that, but this is a bigger project than anything I've taken on, but I've helped with a lot of different building projects. So this will be the first time where I'm like the kind of the contractor and I'm really looking forward to it. This is a very unique house, come on in. But this is a, a special type of earth building uh, material. So this is called chip slip. And what it is, is it's um, sawdust, thick sawdust mixed with a, a very liquidy clay uh, slip. And when that stuff's mixed together, you make this basically like this soft, crumbly, um, somewhat firm uh, insulation. So this is about six inches of, of this type of insulation. And what was intended um, was for it to be plastered over with a finer uh, mixture of sand, clay, and straw. And that becomes a beautiful, smooth wall. Uh, plaster is really fun to play with. You can like put designs in it or whatever. Some people put bottles and stuff in. And the other neat thing about this type of building is that it's breathable. So there's no plastic, there's no vapor barrier in this. It just, it's just plaster, the insulation, and then um, uh, whatever's on the outside. So the floor itself here is, it looks like concrete, but it's actually just really, uh, uh, it's it's called an earth floor. It's it's got a mixture of um, oils mixed into the top to make it smooth. I'll probably put insulation down and then uh, wood over top so that there's a bit of a barrier because it it is quite cold. This is this is it. I'm thinking of taking this fireplace out and putting in a a, a rocket stove mass heater. If anyone has any tips on, on rocket stoves in a small space, like I, I have the idea of doing it in the van, but I know mass is heavy, so you want something light when you're on your wheels, but a rocket stove is, to me, the, the awesomest technology for getting the efficiency of whatever fuel you're using, and then also rocket stoves use very small pieces of wood, whereas something like this, you're using huge chunks of wood. This will probably all run on 12 volt uh, with solar panels, and uh, I have to either collect rainwater um, or have it pump up from a water source. So this is the upstairs. I, I mean, I don't know if this even counts as a tiny house. To me, this seems humongous. I guess to everyone else it seems small, but I intend on cutting this into two bedrooms. And then uh, I got a couple weird, weird ideas. I, I have this idea where uh, I'd like to have a little sink right here in, in each of these um, skylight wells. So when you get up in the morning, you can just brush your teeth right here, you can look out. You know, something that makes your face get close to the to the window, you can look out at the scene, see the morning, brush your teeth, and then it's right there. Um, but yeah. Right when I got out of high school, I, I chose to live a minimalistic lifestyle. I chose to see how far I could stretch a dollar and how little I could I could make and live off of that and that really carried me through my 20s and now into my mid 20 my mid my mid 30s so from an environmental point of view living minimalistically uh, you know low impact on the earth all those things like that that feels good and that feels right but um, 
more to it. I think that with this consumer culture and plastics and gifts and and buying and size and all that stuff, we were really disconnected from the things that make us alive. And so for me, I feel really good when I have a pair of socks that my mom got me for Christmas. I think of her when I put them on and, and that's that's a good close step. But I think, uh, I think that we've been living indigenously for a lot longer as a species than we've been living as a civilized thing. And we need to, my personal belief is that when we are connected to the food that we eat by growing it, seeing it, having it hit, uh, get the same water and sun that we're also getting um, when our clothes are made or, or passed down and when the the buildings that we live in are something that we've built then we have a real strong connection to the things that give us um, life and I think that gives life meaning I've, I've been living in this space I'm now going to be living in this trailer uh, while I work on the van and the van is a, a basic small project that will get me like practicing some of these skills so that when I work on the actual cabin I'll have my head around electrical and plumbing and stuff like that um, So yeah, I'm kind of in transition, but I've got four different tiny home spaces on the go It's definitely an odd time to be checking in as I'm moving out of the most impressive tiny home space But I've got like I say these other three on the on the go so I mean, come back in a, in a couple months or at the end of the summer and see where I'm at then because I'll probably have a lot more, a lot more to show.